Welcome to Faith Flight School. I'm Captain Tyler. Now here at Faith Flight School, we learn about the Word of God and how to be doers of it. As we're doers of the Word of God, our faith can take flight and we can receive all the promises that God has for us. Here at Faith Flight School, you'll need your flight manual. That's the Bible. If you don't have it, you better go get it. The Bible has all the instructions that we need to live a life full of faith. Let's get this lesson started with some praise and worship first. We'll head out to the hangar.
Thank you, God. Mm -hmm. Boys and girls, let's take some time to close our eyes, not be distracted by anything else. Let's focus on the Lord. Raise your hands. Say, thank you, Lord. Everybody say, thank you, Father God. You are so good to me. that the highest king would welcome me I was lost but he brought me and know oh, his love for me oh his love for me who the sun sets free oh is free Grace runs deep. 
there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. Sing in my father's house. In my father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child of God. Yes, I Yes! Yes! Oh, hello! And welcome to the Faith Flight School Information Station, where we gather information for your inspiration. I'm Tom Teller, and I was just talking to Mr. Potato Head about today's lesson. Let's open up our handbook and find out what we'll be learning about. Yes! One of my favorite things to do we'll be navigating the Word of God and going to the book of Acts. We'll be learning about the men and women of God that waited for the promise of the Holy Spirit and how they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And that happened because they yielded themselves fully to God, even their tongues. So today, let's be faithful hearers Let's get out our listening ears and hear the Word of God. Hey, Faith Life Kids, it is offering time. So I want you to grab your manuals and we're going to open up to the book of Hebrews. Now, is Hebrews in the Old Testament or the New Testament? It's the New Testament, you're right. So open up your manuals to Hebrews 11, and we're gonna go down and start in verse six. Are you ready? All right, read with me. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. So. It's impossible to please him. Who's him? Well, that's God, right? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. But if we have faith and believe in God and seek him, it says he is a rewarder of those. Isn't that great? Now we're going to go back to the book of Philippians. It's just a few pages back, and it's still in the New Testament. So flip back a couple books. Philippians 4, and it's going to be verse 19. Are you ready? Okay, let's read it together. And my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Wow. It says, my God. Who's God? My God, you have to claim God as yours and claim him as your provider and your protector. He's our God. Let's look at the next part. My God shall supply. Does it say he might supply? Does he say he will think about supplying? No, it says he shall supply, he will supply, and we can be confident and bold in believing that he will supply. But what's he supplying? It says, my God shall supply all your needs. Well, does that mean just some of the important things that we need? No, all of our needs, every single need that we have, big and small, it says, my God shall supply all your needs. I want you to say that with me. My God shall supply all your needs. All of them, every single one of our needs shall be supplied. And we can trust God to supply them and provide for our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So what this means is, is that we, 
If we claim God and we believe God and trust in him in faith, he is a rewarder of those who seek him. And we seek him. Do you believe in God? Well, if you believe in God and you have faith in him, he shall supply all that you need. How great is that? Hey, boys and girls. You know, God uses his word to help teach us, correct us, and train us. Through his word, we are equipped for every good work. His word helps us to fulfill all that he has for us to do. We are going to be exploring the book of Acts. This is the first book that we see believers being filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They were equipped with the power to preach the gospel and be a witness to others. You know, do you think you would be well equipped to go on a camping trip without any camping gear? Well, no. It makes it a whole lot easier when you have the right tools and more fun. You know, when we pray in tongues, it helps edify ourselves. So it builds ourselves up. Like how you would build a tent whenever you go camping. You would want a strong, stable tent. And let's see, what do we have in here? Like the phone or the map on the GPS on my phone helps me follow the best route or to avoid any danger. Like how we pray in tongues, we pray in the perfect will of God to help us be in the right place at the right time. Let's see, what else do we have here? Um, oh, or like this water. You need some water. Mmm, <sighs> that's refreshing. You know, speaking in tongues refreshes us, especially when we're tired, sad, or frustrated. And if you have water, one more important thing you need is some good food. You know, when we eat food, it helps build up our bodies. Just like when we pray in tongues, it builds up our faith. Let's see, what's some more stuff we have in here? One more thing is a light. Because when it gets dark, you need to be able to see around your campground. And just like how we pray out anything that we don't know. You know, one of my favorite things is sitting at the campfire singing songs. And when we, we give thanks perfectly, when we sing and praise in the spirit, and it helps to control our tongue. You know, when we pray in tongues, it can even keep pests away, just like this bug spray. Got it. You know, the book of Acts is filled with instances of people receiving this gift. Sometimes people would receive just by hearing word about the Holy Spirit. You know, anyone who accepts Jesus as Lord and Savior qualifies to receive the Holy Spirit. Through the help of the Holy Spirit, God will supernaturally guide us in a way to fulfill His perfect will. Mmm! Wow! So good! Oh, hey kids! Hey, listen to the scripture I've been reading. It's in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. It tells us that all scripture is breathed out by God. It's profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. The Bible, it does so much for us. It teaches us, corrects us, trains us, and through his word, it equips us to do his work. And when we get in the word, it will put amazing things on the inside of us. Let's do that right now. Let's do a little navigation in the New Testament and find the book of Acts. Sing the song with me to help. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John. Acts and, oh, there it is, the book of Acts. Fact, the book of Acts is the only book of history in the New Testament. That is correct, fact finder Francis. And the book of Acts, it was written by Dr. Luke, the same Luke that wrote the book of Luke. You know, God told the disciples that they should not leave Jerusalem, 
but to wait there until they had received the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Fact, he promised in Acts 1.8 that they would receive power to be witnesses for him and spread the good news all over the earth. And this wasn't just any power. This was the power of the Holy Spirit, the power that helped them to be these great witnesses for him. And they did what Jesus said. They waited there in the upper room. That's right. In fact, there were 120 people gathered all together in the upper room, not just the disciples, but many others that followed Jesus. That's right. And as they waited, as they obeyed God, the Holy Spirit came in as a rushing mighty wind, and they were filled with the Spirit, speaking in other tongues. Fact, speaking in tongues is the evidence of the fulfillment of the Holy Spirit. That's right. As they spoke in tongues, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. With a boldness, Peter stood up. He preached the good news of the gospel, and many were added to the church. That's right. In fact, over 3,000 people were added to the church that day. They call this day the Day of Pentecost. Can you say that with me? Pentecost. It was a wonderful day. And there were many days of wonderful things happening after that. It didn't stop on that day. There were signs, wonders, miracles. And Jesus confirmed his word with all of these amazing things. It was exciting. And that's still going on today. That's right. Fact, millions of people are sharing Jesus with people all around the globe and being added to God's great kingdom. You can share the gospel with your family and friends and be part of the Great Commission too. That's right. And there's something that will help you with this. It's the great power of the Holy Spirit. That's right. Open your manuals. We're going to start with a scripture. Can anyone tell me and take a guess what book of the Bible we're going to turn to? Yes, Acts. Okay, we're going to turn to Acts. 1 8. We're going to start there. Are you there? Okay, good. Read with me. It says, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all of Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Boys and girls, the believers were faithful to do what Jesus had instructed them to do after they were filled with the Holy Spirit. And Jesus had instructed them to go out and spread the gospel to everyone they met because the Holy Spirit empowered them to do that. And they, they, there was about 120 of them that went out to spread the good news about Jesus. And they went into the cities and the towns where they lived. And you know what? Even though there was about 120 of them, the more they told, the more people they told, the more and more believers there became. 3,000 in one day. Wow, isn't that amazing? That's amazing. I want to read another scripture. So let's read Acts 2, 47. Are you ready? Okay, turn with me. It's just one page over. All right, it says, Praising God and having favor with all the people, and the Lord added to the church daily those were, who were being saved. The message of the gospel caused so many to make Jesus the Lord of their life, boys and girls. And they would come together and that they, they would worship the Lord and praise the Lord. And you know what? That's where the church began. The power of the Holy Spirit through all of those believers caused more and more people to believe in the Lord. And not only that, but the Lord added to the church every single day, just like he still does today in our churches. There's new believers that come in every single day because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, we may just be one person, but when we accept Jesus as the Lord and Savior of our life, and we accept the Holy Spirit to come in and we allow His power to rule and reign in our life, you know what happens? That power of the Holy Spirit, it gives us the boldness and the courage to minister to the good news of Jesus everywhere, to our friends, our family, and our neighbors, everywhere. So I challenge you, boys and girls, 
get out there and go tell the good news to everyone you see. Hey there, Faith Life Kids. I have a question for you. Do you ever feel like you're lacking in wisdom? Do you ever feel down or even frustrated? Sometimes do you feel like you're unsure of what to do in life? Maybe you wish you had stronger faith or clarity or better self-control. Well, I have just the thing for you, speaking in tongues. It says in Acts 2.38 that anyone who's saved can receive the Holy Spirit as a free gift. And not only that, when they receive the Holy Spirit, they also get speaking in tongues. When we receive the Holy Spirit, we get the solutions to our problems. We get wisdom. We get the joy of the Lord as our strength. We receive direction and control in our life. We get stronger faith. We get clarity. We get better self-control. But that's not all. Sometimes when you're praying, you ever felt like maybe you didn't know what else to pray afterward? Well, when you're speaking in tongues, you're praying out the perfect will of God. And when you do, God hears you and he understands you. And he uses your prayers in big ways to help you and to help others. Here, I think that is pretty good right there. Oh, hey, Miss Francis. Hi, Miss Hannah. What are you up to? I am setting up a demonstration for the kids. Oh, cool. Well, what about you? Oh, I've been doing one of my favorite things. Okay. I have been finding facts while we've been navigating the Book of Acts. Oh, that's awesome. What have you learned so far? Fact. The Book of Acts is the 44th book of the Bible. It has 28 chapters and 1,007 verses. 1,007 verses? That's awesome! You know, every single verse is God speaking directly to us. That's right. It's so awesome because we can know what He thinks about everything. That's right. God has given us this Bible and it is full of all of His thoughts. Fact. We can know what He thinks about us and what He wants for our lives. It's all right here. Yeah, and God wants us to know His will. He's actually made it so easy for us to know as well by giving us the Bible. And that's why it is so important that we learn how to navigate it. And as we read our Bibles and think on it, we'll begin to think more like Him. The book of Acts is a list of examples provided for us to learn from. The believers that came before us in the Bible um, yielded to the Spirit. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Hey, speaking of the book of Acts, let's dive into it. Let's open our manuals to Acts 1, verse 8. All right, here we are, Acts 1, almost there, booyah. Okay, but before we read it, I want to remind everybody that we've already learned that Jesus, before he went to go see the Father up in heaven, he told his disciples, hey, I'm not going to leave you without any help. In fact, I'm going to send you a helper. Now let's read the word of God. It says, but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Fact, in the Greek, the Holy Spirit is parakletos. Can you say that with me? Parakletos. That's right. And it means counselor, intercessor, advocate, and comforter. In other words, one sent aside to help. That's right. On the day of Pentecost, Jesus, his promise that he made came to pass. And 120 believers were filled with the Holy Spirit and started speaking in other tongues. Fact, the Holy Spirit has come in many different forms, including a mighty rushing wind. Whoa. On the day of Pentecost, mm -hmm. it came in the form of tongues of fire as it fell upon all of those in the upper room. And on the day that Jesus was baptized, it came in the form of a dove. Yeah. You know, it is God's will that we receive the Holy Spirit. And all it takes is asking and receiving. You need your faith and a willing tongue. Now, I have some scriptures that I want us to read. And boys and girls, I want you to answer every question that the scripture asks. Can you do that? Awesome. And are you excited about it? Oh, good. Okay, so we're going to open our Bibles to Luke. Flip over. And where are we at? 11, verse 11 and verse 12. Okay, it says, 
If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? No. No. Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? No. Yuck. Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a serpent? Oh, no. no. How silly would it be if you walked down your stairs to the kitchen where your dad was at and you said, Dad, can I have an egg for breakfast? And your dad said, sure, here's a serpent. <laughs> oh, that's so yucky. Your dad would never do that because he's a good dad. And our father, God, is a good father. He gives us good things. That's right. Fact, God is good. He is always good and he is only good. That's absolutely right. Now, let's go to Luke eleven thirteen. It says, if you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? All you have to do is ask and receive, and then the Holy Spirit will fill you up like this. Oh, no, wait. Can you tell when this cup is full? Right, you might see some water. Oh, like I hear the water outside. You might see some water on top and especially if it was overflowing, you would really start to see it. <laughs> so, the Holy Spirit fills you up and as it fills you up, you begin to get a desire to speak in tongues and it fills you more and more and then oh. <laughs> Fact, that cup is full and overflowing. <laughs> it sure is. God's desire is for us to be filled with the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues. And I want you to pay attention today because you are going to get the opportunity to receive the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues too. <laughs> Hello again, Faith Life Kids. You've heard a lot about the benefits of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. But wait, there's more, much more. Have you ever felt like something wasn't right in your life? Like something might be bothering you? Well, speaking in tongues can turn that around. The Holy Spirit will give you answers to questions and even show you things to come. Don't wait. You can begin using this amazing gift today. And the best part, it's free. That's right, it's absolutely free. When you were saved, you receive speaking in tongues available to you by the Holy Spirit, like a free package deal. All you have to do is receive it by faith and yield your tongue to the Holy Spirit. That's when you feel the unction to speak rising, bubbling up inside of you. You just begin to speak. It's a heavenly language. Your spirit is speaking with God. So start speaking with tongues today. Since the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit has been present on this earth. And anyone who has accepted Jesus as Lord of their life, they may receive the Holy Spirit and be filled with the evidence of speaking in tongues. This is a free gift that Jesus has given to us. And you know what, boys and girls? There are many benefits of speaking in tongues. Would you like to know those benefits? Okay, well, open your manuals with me to Jude 120. That's in the New Testament in the very back. Are you there? Okay, let's read. But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Boys and girls, when we pray in the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues, we are edifying or building ourselves up. And also, when we pray in the Spirit, it is helping us know God's perfect will for our lives. And it help builds our faith up, right? Yeah, so once we pray and we ask the Father for the Holy Spirit, we will receive it. And at that point, we will open our mouths and when we begin to speak by faith, We'll have it. And you know, it's almost as easy as taking a drink. Okay, let's read one more scripture to know more about this. Turn with me to John 7, 37 and 38. On the last day, 
the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Boys and girls, what do I need to do if I want to take a drink of this water? What do I need to do? What was that? Yes, open my mouth, right? If I want to take a drink, I can't take a drink with my mouth closed. Girl, no, no, that'd be too hard. So we want to open our mouth, right? Well, that's a lot like receiving the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. You have to open your mouth and yield to the Holy Spirit and speak what he speaks. Now, if you're not, if you, okay, say you open your mouth, for instance, and, I, and I'm going to use this as an example, okay? Can, am I drinking even though I've got my mouth open? Am I drinking? No. Same thing with the Holy Spirit. If you're praying and you're like, Jesus, I want the Holy Spirit. Is anything happening? No. You've got to use your voice. Now, it may sound silly at first and you may not understand the words that are coming out of your mouth. But you know what? If you will do it by faith and just ask the Lord to help you, eventually the Holy Spirit will fill your mouth with His words. Boys and girls, we are going to go in our manuals to John 16, 13. Now, is that in the Old Testament or the New Testament? That's right, it's in the New Testament. Now, I'm reading in the New King James Version. Are you with me? Great. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you the things to come. Now let's also go over to 1 Corinthians 14, 2. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. Now, boys and girls, these scriptures are showing us, the first one that we read is that the Holy Spirit is a spirit of truth and that he will guide us into things that we don't know. Uh, and he will show us and guide us in truth. And then in the second one, it revealed that we are praying directly to God. And God gives us utterance to be able to pray out his perfect will. That is so cool. Now, I have this vase in front of me and I have a picture behind it. Can you tell me what the picture's of? No, I couldn't see it either. It was, it was really unclear. And, and that's like in our daily lives. Maybe there's a big decision that we're coming up to and we have to make a choice, but it's really unclear which way we should go. And boys and girls, when we have the gifts of the Spirit and we pray in the Spirit, he helps us to guide us and to show us the, the very clear and direct path that we should take. Now, I've got some water here, and this is like when we are filled with the Spirit, things become more clear. Can you see the picture? Is it clear? I can see we have a little boy there, and that is the path that he should take. There we go, crystal clear. Boys and girls, when we pray and we can receive clarity and direction, and when we pray every day, we'll just go stronger and everything will become more and more clear, especially if we're unsure, that's, that's for sure when we should pray. But we could also pray every day because sometimes we think we know what's up ahead, but we don't really know. So it always is good to pray. And when we yield our tongues to the Lord, then we receive answers and direction and help. And even it'll show us, the Holy Spirit will show us new things in the word as we learn to navigate the scriptures. So you can pray in tongues anywhere, anytime, and you can begin to receive clarity and direction in your lives.
It's confession time. Confession time is one of my favorite times because it's all facts about what God's word says about us. All right, repeat after me. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Awesome. All right, if you're not already standing, go ahead and stand up because this one has motions. I'm quick. I'm sharp. I'm bright. Good looking. I'm very rich and a major blessing. I'm a doer. I'm a doer. I'm a doer of the word of God. Okay, for this one, grab your Bibles and hold them up. This is my Bible. It is the word of God. Fact. I am what God says I am. Fact. I can do what God says I can do. Fact. I can be what God says I can be. Hello, boys and girls. I'm Dr. No, that's K-N-O, Faith Light School's resident expert in all things factual, scientific, and fun. Uh, now, you'll have to forgive me. I have Fazberry doing an experiment on rain and thunder, so you may hear some noises. Don't worry about those. He seems to be quite successful so far, but <laughs> never mind all that. So, you have been navigating the Word of God, our manuals, and we've been going through Acts recently, learning about the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues. Well, I have a wonderful scientific experiment to give you a visual representation of that. Now, for the sake of our experiment, let us pretend that this empty beaker represents a person. What type of person? Well, it represents the type of person that has not been born again. They've not received Jesus into their lives. They've not been born again into the family of God. Well, Jesus himself said that when he went to the Father, he would send to us another helper, a comforter. And we know that as, yes, the Holy Spirit. Wonderful. You know, in the Greek, one of the Holy Spirit's names is parakletos, which means intercessor, advocate, counselor, comforter. In general, he is a very, very good helper. Helper with a capital H. Well, if somebody is not born again, they've not received the Holy Spirit. And so nothing really happens in their life. They don't have the goodness of God. But when one is born again, I'm going to pull these out. Give me just a moment here. When a person is born again, they receive all the good things that God has given them, including the Holy Spirit. That's what these beads represent. These beads represent the goodness of God, all his good things, his mercy, his joy, his love, his healing, his provision, everything. There's so many, too many to count. And one of them is the Holy Spirit. So now this full beaker, oh, we don't need this, one of this full beaker represents a person that has been born again, and they have all the good things, and they have the Holy Spirit. But they have to go a step further. Now let me read some scripture to you. Pull out your manuals if you don't have them already. We are going to read Acts chapter 2, verse 4. It says, And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak with other tongues, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Fazberry, you might want to change some of the numbers. It's a little loud. Thank you. Don't mind that. So, this is the point I want to show you, boys and girls, is the people in Acts, the disciples, had the Holy Spirit brought and given to them, but notice, nothing happened until they were the ones that spoke. In our lives, we have the Holy Spirit but it's up to us. God did his part, and now it's time for our part. And our part is we have to speak using our mouths, our tongues, in accordance and obedience to what the Holy Spirit gives us. That's what this is going to represent. Me, in my own life, opening my mouth, using my tongue, speaking as the Holy Spirit gives me utterance. Watch. Ooh. And it just goes right out. Wasn't that interesting, boys and girls? Now notice, I didn't pour it out. It was going on its own. It just kept coming and kept coming. You see, that's what it's like, boys and girls. The force of gravity that was affecting these beads as I pulled 
was higher than the force of the potential energy of the beads in the cup. Thus, once I yanked the beads out, the inertia that was present throughout the strand of beads is what caused it to just continuously, continuously flow, ever flowing. Now imagine if I had an unlimited amount of beads. They'd just keep coming and it would never stop. And see, boys and girls, that's what it's like. When we open our mouths and we speak as the Holy Spirit gives us utterance, then the speaking in tongues, that supernatural utterance, it just flows on through us. Hey kids, want an easy way to learn the books of the New Testament? Sing along with us. Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John. Acts and the letters to the Romans. First and second Corinthians, Galatians, and Ephesians. Philippians and Colossians. The first 12 books of the New Testament. First and Second Timothy Titus, Philemon, Hebrews and James First and Second Peter A one, two, three, John, Jude, Revelation These are the books of the New Testament Which are located in the B-I-B-L-E this is good stuff to know, it helps us find out where to go when we are reading the Bible. Woo! Huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Hey kids! Today we've been learning about being filled with the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues. Now what I have here is a popcorn maker. And I've already put in some oil in there. Have you made popcorn at home before? Um, and we have some popcorn kernels. Now, what does this have to do with being filled with the Holy Spirit? Well, let's find out. There are two steps to being filled with the Holy Spirit. The first is to receive Jesus as Lord. When we receive Jesus into our heart, then we are ready for the Holy Spirit. Just like this oil in here is warming up, it's getting hot, it's getting ready. This is representing us when we receive Jesus. We are primed and ready to receive the Holy Spirit. The second is to ask. Simple, right? We ask God to fill us with the Holy Spirit. And he gives us the Holy, the Holy Spirit. He fills us with the Holy Spirit. And then at that point, there's a desire inside to speak. Now we're not speaking English or Spanish or French, but it's a language that comes from inside, a heavenly language. Words and sounds will bubble up from inside of us. Now, Let's watch what happens when we receive the Holy Spirit. There we go, there we go. Pop, pop. Just like this, these kernels are starting to pop up. It's just like when we start to speak in the Holy Spirit. When we go out to speak in the Spirit, then these sounds and words will start to pop up within us. It may start a little slow at first, just like these, this popcorn was doing. But then, pop, 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 pop. We were to start to flow out easily. The more you do it, the easier it will become. Now, praying in the Holy Spirit will fill us with faith. It will help build, us, build our faith and help fill us with the Holy Spirit over and over again. That's why it's so important to pray every day. This will help God's goodness to flow in our lives. Let's help us to stay strong in faith and full of the Spirit. And that's exactly what God intended when he gave us this gift. Wow. I know I want more. <laughs> Boys and girls, 
Let's grab our manuals and let's turn to 1 Corinthians 14, 2. And that is in the New Testament. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit, he speaks mysteries. Now let's jump down to verses 14 and 15. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my understanding is unfruitful. What is the conclusion then? I will pray with the spirit, and I will also pray with the understanding. I will sing with the spirit, and I will also sing with the understanding. Let's also go over to Romans 8, 26. Likewise, the spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Boys and girls, this is talking about if you reach a point where you just don't know and you don't know so much, you don't even know how to begin to pray about what you don't know. Well, the Holy Spirit will come and he will intercede or step in and help us. And he will guide us and direct our prayers. We can ask the Lord for utterance of our prayers in a specific area. And he will help us pray until we reach clarity there. Here, I have a little example. This is a person. And he knows that God's perfect will for him is to have a full life doing what he is called to do. But he doesn't really know what he's supposed to be called to do. So he decides to ask the Lord for utterance in prayer. And he begins praying in the spirit. I'm praying a little bit every day. And it slowly the picture becomes revealed. And so what do you see? It looks like he's holding something and he might have a jacket on. So he keeps praying and more and more is revealed. So I think that might be a clipboard and he's wearing a white lab coat. Now, what kind of jobs do people wear lab coats in? Right, right, scientists like Dr. No, they wear lab coats and doctors and I heard someone say dentists, it's very good. But now Dr. No and dentists, they do very different things. So if he stopped praying here, he wouldn't really know where to go. So if he keeps praying, look at that. There are animals down there. Now, what kind of doctor works with animals? That's right, veterinarians, yes. So boys and girls, if he stopped praying over here, he wouldn't have really known the full picture. That's why it's so important for us to pray all the way until we reach a point of victory and praise and peace. Earlier, we learned about how 3,000 people accepted Jesus as their Lord and the power of the Holy Spirit came on them in one day. Wow, that is so amazing, wasn't it? Yes, it was. But you know what, boys and girls? Maybe you would like to have Jesus in your heart and be the Lord of your life and receive the power of the Holy Spirit because maybe you've never done that. Well, if you would, it's so easy and it will be the best decision you have ever made. Would you like to do it? Okay, well then say this prayer with me. Bow your head and close your eyes and repeat after me. Father God, I believe in you. I believe you sent your son Jesus to die on the cross for my sins. I believe he rose again and is alive right now. Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart and be Lord of my life. Yay! That is so exciting. Now, boys and girls, maybe you would like to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Would you like to do that? It is so easy. All you have to do is Believe and receive it. Open your mouth and speak. It's that easy. Would you like to receive the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues so that you will have the power to spread the good news to others? Great. Okay, I want you to say it with me. Now remember, when you, after we say this prayer together, remember 
you just speak, believe and receive it, and it's gonna happen, okay? Are you ready? Okay, let's pray. Father, I ask for the gift of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues in Jesus' name. So now begin speaking. Thank you, Jesus! That's so exciting! Yes! Now we have Jesus in our hearts and we have the power of the Holy Spirit. And you know what, boys and girls? We can go everywhere and spread the good news to all of everyone around us. Wow! Did you learn a lot today about the book of Acts? I know I did. It's amazing how God filled them with the Holy Spirit and they became great witnesses for Him. Did you know that's what the Holy Spirit will do in you? He'll give you confidence to be a great witness. You know, the Holy Spirit can't do our witnessing for us. Just like God can't do our praying for us, but He can help you, just as He promised. It's time for us to get out there and be doers of the Word of God and not hearers only. So let's let this information be inspiration to our faith. Let our faith take flight and get out there and be doers. Doers, doers of the Word of God. I'm Tom Teller. We'll see you next week.